It's Monday, September 30th, 2024, and we're back with the Climate One Audio Newsletter. I'm producer Austin Colon. And I'm producer Megan Basilia. Our latest episode is a special one. Jane Goodall is celebrating 90. Environmental icon Jane Goodall is celebrating 90 years of life, and she's not backing off of her passionate commitment to nature. The indefatigable Goodall is now focused on three interwined crises, biodiversity loss, climate change, and environmental inequity. She has one important message for our audience around the world. Vote as though our children's lives depend on it, because honestly, they do. Jane Goodall is joined by Rhett Butler, founder of Manga Bay, a nonprofit media organization that delivers news and inspiration from nature's front line via a network of more than 900 journalists in about 80 countries. Listen now on climateone.org or wherever you get your pods. Join Climate One for a live event this Tuesday with Ayana Elizabeth Johnson, Bill McKibben, and Abigail Dillon. It's easy enough to look around and see signs of current climate destruction and future climate doom. But marine biologist and co-founder of the All We Can Save Project, Dr. Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson, asks us instead to focus on the question, what if we get it right? Johnson, Third Act founder Bill McKibben, and Earth Justice President Abigail Dillon have all dedicated their lives to saving all they can. In their different ways, through science, public education, and legal action, they have been at the forefront of enacting solutions at the nexus of science, policy, and justice. Conservation is an ongoing struggle. Johnson, McKibben, and Dillon recognize that it will take all of us, not just scientists and lawyers, to get us through to the other side of the present existential crisis. Join Climate One co-host Ariana Brocious in what's sure to be an inspiring live conversation with Ayana Elizabeth Johnson, Bill McKibben, and Abigail Dillon. That's live in person at the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco, October 1st, 2024 at 12 p.m. You can get tickets at climateone.org. And here's what we're reading this week. California sues ExxonMobil for alleged plastic recycling lies. The state of California sued ExxonMobil this week, alleging that the fossil fuel producer has spent decades deceiving the public about the recyclability of plastic. California's Attorney General Raul Bonta, who is also leading a lawsuit against ExxonMobil and four other fossil fuel producers for false advertising, said the company has known for decades that only 5% of plastic products can be recycled. Plastic manufacturing is a major profit center for oil producers, and with the clean energy transition gaining momentum, there are concerns that companies like ExxonMobil are simply pivoting to more plastic production. Reusing the same plastic products, however, is typically not profitable, with the recycling process often costing more than making brand new plastic. ExxonMobil and other fossil fuel majors insist that reusing and recycling plastics eliminates the need for reduction in the materials use. Some local and state governments are unconvinced. In the past decade, New Jersey and California both required grocery stores to switch to using thicker, supposedly reusable plastic bags at checkout. Unfortunately, this approach backfired. Studies have shown that California's 10-year-old law resulted in more plastic by weight thrown away. In response, 91 nations and the state of California have passed complete bans on plastic bag use, and similar efforts are underway to mandate a change from plastic food packaging and utensils to compostable products. We actually recorded an episode about this. You can find it in our podcast feed under the title, Big Plastic, The New Big Oil. Here are the other headlines we're keeping an eye on. From Floodlight News, this Florida ghost candidate scandal puts the entire utility sector on trial. From e e News, green energy credits see growing Republican support. From NPR, climate change prompted these scientists to reinvent chocolate. From Canary Media, Major Ohio cities aim to cut building emissions with voluntary program. All right, let's connect the dots. Major tech companies like Microsoft claim that artificial intelligence will be instrumental in solving the climate crisis. Meanwhile, journalist Karen Howe recently revealed that Microsoft, a major backer of ChatGPT, is simultaneously selling its AI tools to fossil fuel companies like Chevron and Shell for the purpose of improving the process of finding new oil and gas deposits. 
Generative AI tools like ChatGPT also require massive amounts of energy, with Microsoft's latest environmental report showing a 29% increase in the corporation's total emissions since 2020. And that leaves many wondering, can AI and the planet coexist? Climate One interviewed how Gavin McCormick, Priya Bhanti, and Amy McGovern earlier this year in search of an answer to one of the most important questions of our time. You can find that episode in our podcast feed under the title, Artificial Intelligence, Real Climate Impacts. And you can find that on climateone.org or wherever you get your pods. And that's it for this week's Climate One newsletter. Thanks for listening.